Hello guys, so because we're in this situation and I don't want you to um, lose the rhythm of actually uh, class, uh, the class rhythm. Um, well, I'm just going to be um, making these videos uh, with short explanations of, of, the, of, the, of what we're going to be doing, okay, so that it's not you reading at home, etc. So I can explain a little bit to you. Uh, still, any doubts, you can still uh, write to my email or uh, upload your doubts on the Edmodo page of each one of your own classrooms, okay? So, we're going to start with the invertebrates, okay? The invertebrates is one of the groups of the animal kingdom, okay? You already know this, the two main groups, invertebrates and vertebrates. But the invertebrates is the largest group uh, in diversity of the animals, okay, 95% of the species of animals we know are invertebrates, and we think there are even many more, okay, because there's lots of parts of the earth that we still not know, like the, the deep ocean, okay. Right, uh, we find them in both aquatic and terrestrial environments, okay, you can see here, for example, the prawn, we all know they live in the sea, and the snails li live on in terrestrial uh, ecosystems, or there's flies, uh, which we find in the summer all the time, okay? Right, um, they go from very uh, diverse sizes, okay? Uh, there's a wide range of sizes. They go from microscopic sizes, okay, like for example, um, well, for example, some prawns that can be very, very, very small, okay? Up to actually uh, the giant squids, which uh, squids, which are known to be like 30 meters long. They're way bigger than we are. Okay, and those are invertebrates as well. Okay, most of them are going to have an exoskeleton. What's an exoskeleton? Basically, an external skeleton. Like for example, the snail have have the shell. That's an external skeleton. Okay, there's other other types of skeletons. Um, like for example. Um, the squids that have the internal skeleton, okay, but always without vertebras, okay, or a spinal cord. Um, most of them are motile, they move, okay, but we can find others that are sessile, okay, especially groups of uh, starfish or sea urchins which don't move a lot, or even uh, the crinodates, uh, which are a group inside the echinoderms, which are. Um, uh, the sea lilies which don't move okay or all the first groups we're going to see today which for example are the sponges that don't move either okay right well um this is the the photograph of your of your book okay uh, we're going to study mainly eight groups of invertebrates in some of them i'm going to explain other internal groups like for example the mollusks or the arthropods okay but well mainly we've got these eight groups today we're gonna do porifera and nidarians okay and uh, the following day we'll continue with platyhelminths nematodes and annelids which are the 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 worms okay then we will continue with the mollusks which have three groups the gastropods the vivalvus and the cephalopods then we go into the arthropods, which have mainly four groups, myripods, arachnids, crustaceans, and insects. And we will finish with the echinoderms, all right? And um, this will be doing it between this week and the following week. Okay, I will be uploading these sh short videos with explanations, plus I'll give you other videos to, to be able to go through it, okay? And we'll continue with some activities that you will have to upload like you're doing up to now, okay? Right, we're going to start with the periphera, okay? The periphera have a very, very, very famous um, individual, Bob Sponge, okay? Bob Sponge is a sponge, and the sponges are periphera. Why are they called sponges? Well, because before we used to use plastic everywhere, we had the sponges, which are basically periphera that uh, died, and we stayed with the skeleton, and we would use them as a sponge, okay? These are the sponges, well, maybe our grandparents used or whatever, okay? Um, maybe some of you even still have some of these at home so that you know these are sponges. That now it's uh, illegal to actually uh, um, use them for this, okay? Well, if you've got one at home, nothing's going to happen, but um, now you can't buy them, okay? Because the, some of them are in, in danger of being extinct, okay? 
Well, these are the sponges. Okay, this is a photo of a normal sponges. They're gonna be. They're gonna form as well. Um, the corals. Okay, they're gonna live attached to the rocks and they don't move. They are filter feeders. Okay, what does this mean? Well, basically, they're gonna filter the water. They're called porifera because they are full of pores, as you can see. Okay, full of them very small ones okay so they are sometimes they're so small like here that you can't even see them and then they've got a very big one okay so the water is going to come in through these pores and come out through the big one of the top okay so they come in through here through these pores and they come up out this big one that as you see in Spanish is called osculo in English it's called osculum alright um, in the central cavity there usually is nothing but uh, through the pores we're going to find some cells Okay, that are going to filter the water, they're going to capture the food and the oxygen, and they're going to put it inside the body. Okay, the body doesn't have a symmetry. Okay, some of them can be more or less symmetrical, but most of them don't have symmetries. Okay, uh, it's basically like a sac. Uh, it's, they've got an internal skeleton formed by uh, some spines or spikes, okay, called spicules, and these are different types of them. Okay, these are one of the characteristics we use to classify them. You can see that they've got a large diversity of these uh, spikes um, to form the internal skeleton. Right, the other group we're going to see today are the Nidarian. Okay, the Nidarian are basically two mm, forms. Okay, uh, we've got the jellyfish, or medusa in Spanish, and the polyp, polypo in Spanish. Okay, you've got it in the book as well. Um, now, Basically, uh, they're called Nedaria because they've got a special type of cell. I've not put a single image of it, I don't know why. Which are um, what we call the Nidoblast. They are stinging cells. Okay, These are the cells that why, uh, when we touch a jellyfish or an, a polyp, like an anemone, okay, uh, we, um, we get stinged. Okay? Some uh, sting us, but we are immune to the poison. Some sting us and the poison makes us, you know, like uh, very itchy. Others sting us and actually can kill us, alright? Um, some animals are immune, like for example Nemo, okay? The, the clownfish are immune to some type of poison, so they live inside so that no other fish can go in and eat them because they would get poisoned, but they don't get poisoned, okay? It's a type of symbiosis, which you already know what it is. <coughs> right, um, they live in the ocean, although some of them can live in uh, fresh water, okay? They all are aquatic, and the clue is that the jellyfish can swim, the polyp cannot, the polyp is sessile. And what we have is two stages, okay? So the same animal can be a jellyfish and a polyp in different moments of the life, okay? So I'm going to go through it very fast with you, okay? Here we would have a polyp growing, and when the polyp grows, it forms um, small groups of cells that separate of the, of the main body, and when they grow, they form a jellyfish, okay? This would be a sexual reproduction, because from one polyp, we can obtain hundreds of of jellyfish okay um, these jellyfish we usually this male and female okay and they form ovals and sperm and when they join together they form the cigot this this cigot grows and once it's grown enough it's attached to the floor again and it grows as a new polyp okay so we've got like two stages so the same animal can be a jellyfish or can be a polyp okay Right, <coughs> um, all of them are predators, okay? They use the stinging cells to sting uh, the animal, kill them, and then they put it through the mouth and inside the gastrovascular cavity, which would be this in the, in the jellyfish. This is the mouth, and this is the gastro cavity, gastrovascular cavity in the polyp. In there, they do the digestion, the absorption, and they obtain the nutrients, and then they eliminate the waste back through the mouth, okay? out through the mouth. Okay then, so um, we finish here with the Nidarian, with the first um, YouTube class. Okay guys, uh, subscribe and if you liked it, press like. Okay, uh, I'll keep on uploading videos. Um, I'll keep on sending you the, the, the links so th that you can uh, go inside, but now and then check it because sometimes I'll upload videos beforehand 
uh, if you want if you're very bored and you want to check them okay and it can I'm gonna leave them uploaded for when you have to study and uh, it can help you as well to study going through the class again okay so see you soon guys